I was always attracted to someone who intellectually stimulated me. So I was like, that's my dad. And then I was like, oh, can they be consistent? That was harder to find. Um, and then I was like, okay, can they like protect me and can they create a secure environment? Um, not that I need them to do everything, but is there going to be a balance there? So those were things that kept coming up um, or re, you know, recurring with who I was looking at. So what were the qualities that you were kind of um, like falling for that overshadowed those traits? I think like what looks good on paper. And then also I would say like, like a physical attraction, physical attraction, um, you know, just like the image. Um, also, I think, you know, I'm trying to think back on and sometimes chemistry. Like I think sex messes people up a little bit because it feels good in the moment, but it can give you a false sense of security <laughs> because it's sending things to your brain. Like sex can be just as addictive as drugs. So the same things that are being hit, your dopamine receptors, you know, the oxytocin releases that you're getting from this person can mislead you, which is why you see a lot of people who come in strong and then they get together and they're like, ooh, like there's a whole bunch of other stuff going on because yeah. it's almost like they're blinded to it. Um, so I just think you have to like, you know, you have to keep that in mind. Like the sex could feel like sometimes like physical attraction and chemistry can be a red flag because people can come in so hard on that angle. And then, you know, they can manipulate well there. But then when you really get to know them, you're so deep in, you're like, wait, who is this? You're actually like, where am I? Right, right, right. What is going where did on? I just go to? But it's confusing because as humans, we do want to be attracted to the person. We do want to have some, you know, you do want to have a good uh, chemistry with them physically. So I think it's a balance, though, of like sometimes delaying that gratification to get to know the person. Because it's more clear when you don't sleep with someone. It's clear. It's like you're like, mm, it's easier for I people really to walk I really don't like away. you. Right. <laughs> It's clear. It's clear when you don't sleep with someone, you're like, nope, this is not it. But when you sleep with someone, you're kind of like, well, I kind of feel a little fuzzy. I mean, maybe, maybe we could work through this. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's funny because it's like, it's almost like you're damned if you get it, you're damned if you don't, right? Because right. if you don't, if you get somebody that you truly, truly like, but they ain't knocking your boots off, you might just be like, I don't need to listen to you or I don't need to even be around you or deal with this, right? When you get into those frustrated moments, but then on the flip end side, that person who is, you know, doing his due diligence inside the bedroom, it could kind of eliminate whatever issue that y'all might have had. <laughs> like just, just one session, you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> I don't know if it's fuzzy or if it's healing. No, I'm kidding. Uh, I know. I know you are. Yeah, kind of, sort of. Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> Sounds like you had a personal experience with this, but go ahead. I mean, because, you know, you know, they say that, like, um, what's it? There was a, I forgot what comedian guy said this, but he had did a stand up and basically said, like, he was homeless, so he had no choice but to have good sex. Right? <laughs> <What>? <laughs> and that always, that always applied a roof over his head. It's kind of funny. All right, so like everybody gets fed up to a point, right? Mm -hmm. Like when you get fed up with your results, that's what's really like your transitional period, right? When you might have experienced the same exact result that you didn't in like 10 times, and that 10th time you're like, I am done, right? It's usually sometimes it's even more than the other nine, mm -hmm. and sometimes it's just the icing on the cake. So I'm saying all that because what was your fed up moment? If you in your dark ages. So I'm going to tell you what happened. And this is, you know, I have to credit somebody for this, one of my friends. So I was at this point, like, I had everything. I was successful. I'd done well, with, you know, with my daughter, you know, raising her. And I was like, I went on this trip to Jamaica. I was sitting in this five-star beautiful resort, and I was by myself. And not that you can't go on a vacation and have fun by yourself, because that ended up being one of the most interesting vacations of my life. I know, Stella. Because people kind of took me in and, like, <laughs> took care of me, but not, like, in the way you're thinking. It wasn't a Stella moment or anything I like that. I know, around. I know, I know. But no, I and I remember calling my friend and being like, thank you for, because my friend owned the uh, the timeshare or whatever, and, he, and I was talking to him, I'm like, thank you for, the like, you know, letting me have this experience. I said, it's beautiful here, but I just feel so sad. And I start telling him, like, I said, I just wish I could share this with someone because I didn't realize I was like in the honeymoon part of Jamaica. I think it was in Montego Bay or something. So like everybody was just getting married or, you know, together. And he was like, you do it to yourself, huh? <laughs> 
It's, you, it's on you. You have opportunities, but you're not picking the right people. And that person had never said anything critical of my dating or anything before. But I just started kind of really thinking about it and kind of doing an inventory. And that's a part of like what I coach a lot. It was on me. Sometimes when you're in a bad situation, it's on you because like there's a there's a quote, you're 50 percent of the problem, 100 percent of the solution. You can always remove yourself from a solution. And that's when I realized, I said, you know what? I am. I'm picking people like I know aren't totally emotional available, but they may have these other criteria or I know that they really can't give me what I need. Why am I afraid of getting what I want? And it's like when I changed that and I just started approaching it differently, my life, it, it changed dramatically um, because I just became more aware. And I think a lot of us walk around kind of in an unconscious state mm-hmm. about our relationships. We just go with the flow and, you know, but we know in our heart, we're like something, this ain't totally what I want. And so it was just that 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 moment that I said, you know what? Yeah, I've, I made it. I've done all this stuff, but I want to share it with someone. Yeah. You know, I realized that like people have, grown accustomed to not having their desires Mm. right so like since a kid most people don't get or don't have what they want in life Mm. at all you know um and most people especially as kids are told no so like they don't even really um i guess would be conscious enough or woke enough to even say okay cool this is the i am the determining factor of my solution Mm -hmm. because we're so used to living without our solution yeah you know so i think that that's a great moment for you um, and can I add something? I think people are conditioned, even in relationships, to not know what good looks like. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and what I mean by that is I've had conversations with people where they're like, I'm not supposed to hit somebody when we're fighting. Like, But if they don't hit me, then that means we're not, they're not passionate about this relationship. I'm like, no, 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 that's not how it goes, wow. right? Or there's people out there that didn't have a father figure or a mother figure, and they still desire it so hard, so they kind of keep getting into situations because maybe their parent went through something you know they had a drug issue or drinking issue or whatever and they end up in these codependent relationships and they don't know anything differently because this is what they've lived it's been their norm so you know dysfunctional can become functional to your point um without people it really being their fault per se but i do think that once you do know and you have a sense like okay this is not working for me this is not making my life easier that's when you have to wake up and become a little more conscious and unnumb to it, right? Mm-hmm. So you can change it. So I think some of it's just circumstance uh, with people. Yeah, I, and, and willingness. Yeah. You know, and, and I think there's always a breakthrough moment. Not always, but, you know, for those that have the breakthrough moment, mm-hmm. it's always got to be something from, you know, a, a really just a lost place. I think the, like for me, like I had to admit to myself that I was lost for me to understand that I need direction. And nobody wants to admit that they're lost because we all think that we figured it out, you know, or we all think that we have the solution of a problem that is actually just going to be an ongoing problem, you know, or a growing problem. So I think that when you have that moment, that's when you're like, okay, cool. Well, you know, I am lost because I'm seeing everybody else do this, right? And Or I'm seeing everybody else have this, I should say. And I know I have the ability to obtain that, which is, how I'm kind of viewing, I'm trying to put myself in your shoes. If you're in a place where you're looking at a, you know, a bunch of couples on their honeymoon, mm-hmm. which also is probably the highlight of their re- relationship. Right, right. right? It, is. it was. <laughs> yeah, it's the highest of, you know, so you're like, well, damn, I want one too. Like, <laughs> you know, and. And I think at that point I had been through like so much, you know, we all have our embarrassing moments like of what we've done in relationships and for people and we're like, I will never do that again. But like yeah. sometimes you got to go low, you got to go down through that experience to not do that experience again. But I think it was, you're right. I was around like, they're like, you're here. What are you here for? I'm like, I'm just taking a trip. And it was literally people's <laughs> honeymoon. I'm like, what are you here for? It's my honeymoon. It's my honeymoon. We're celebrating. I was like, oh, okay. And I think it kind of like, it did. You're right. I was like, I'm getting people's high moment too. I think yep. that was part of it. Yeah. So question, right? Mm-hmm. Um, being that you've been through the dark stages or, you know. My dark, like, my dating dark ages. Your dating dark <laughs> ages, I should say. Your DDA. Right? <laughs> I like it. That's an acronym now. It's growing. Yeah. <laughs> um, you have an experience um, of actually going through the, the rock bottom and, you know, coming out on, on top and you know, a lot of people may not be able to communicate that, you know, and really help people navigate through that. So when you're with your clients and, you know, whomever, friends, how do you feel or how do you go about, I guess, 
talking to them about you knowing where they're heading, you know, with whatever behaviors that they're, you know, displaying. I think like I'm really grateful for my experiences. It was not fun to go through those experiences, but I think it makes me highly empathetic. But also I can I can sense and read things pretty quickly with people. So with my clients, for me as a relationship expert, it is hard because I can see them hitting the wall over and over and over again. And people don't always come. I want people I want to be honest about it. People don't always come through it very quickly. It takes time. But I had actually a couple of messages over the last couple of days from clients where they're like, I really thought about what you said. And like, this is changing my life. It, it was worth it for me to go down and like be introspective and figure out my stuff, you know, own my accountability in the relationship. But it doesn't happen overnight. So I don't want to sell it like, hey, now you're aware of your, you know, relationship blind spots. You're going to be all, you know, A-OK. I think it's a, it's, it's a process. So when I'm talking to people, it's me, it's me reminding them, you know, of what good could look like, of, of why they want to be invested in it. Um, Warren Buffett always says the like, top two decisions you make in your life, one of them is who you choose as your partner. Because it does. It affects you physically, emotionally, spiritually, mentally, financially. So a lot of times we're spending so much heartache in situations we just don't need to be in. They just don't make sense. We know we need to get out of it. But we just feel like I can't or I feel dumb that I have to talk to you about this because I know it's dumb that I'm dealing with this maybe, you know. <laughs> and it's not dumb because it's, it's human and, and we're, hum you know, as humans we have emotions and it's complicated. So it's funny. I do have clients that like I had a, a coaching session a couple weeks ago and my client said to me, what year was it that I said that this relationship wasn't right for me? And I was like, it was on this date, because I remind people it was on this date at this time that we talked about this, and this is what you said. Now, what's changed? And they said, yeah, I always knew. But it didn't. that person didn't get out that relationship right away. It took them years yeah. to get out. Yeah, it takes people time because you're changing a behavior. And so first it's like, I, I feel like you're taking people through steps. First you have to make people aware or more conscious of it. Then people will have to like think about it and process it. Then they have to kind of experience it again. Some people are quicker than others, but it, yeah. it just takes time to change those things. So what about, I want to kind of bring this full circle with today's topic, right? Yeah. So what about when you have a person who is choosing you just as much as you were choosing them, but they're still wrong. Per they're still the wrong person for you. Tell me more. Like, what does that look like? So you both are mutually in interested, but how do you know they're the wrong person for you? Well, because like maybe they just have like habits or behaviors that are not actually like benefiting you or mm -hmm. could be detrimental to you. But that person still shows up for you, you know, day in and day out. Mm -hmm. Or they're like, for example, um, let's say there's a guy, a, the bad guy and a good girl likes the bad guy. Usually, like, those bad guys are very loving, mm -hmm. right? Like, they love that girl. They treat her with respect. But his habits outside of that house are not good. Are not good yeah. Right? So he's still showing up and he's choosing her, which is making her probably saying, okay, well, he's here for me. And although he may be, he's also doing things that could technically put them in harm's way or just put them in a bad situation. Um, I guess what I'm trying to ask is, how would we or how would you... Um, Communicate to somebody that, hey, listen, I know this person does love you. He demonstrates or she demonstrates um, their love to you. And, and, you know, they display all the different things that you're asking for. But they're, they're just not a good person outside of you. Yeah. I, I think we can have sometimes blind loyalty in relationships. So, like, it's kind of like, but that person was there. They were there. And that could, yeah. and if we really are about the loyalty, that could weigh in pretty heavily. But I think in that situation, I would say, okay. Let's look at, let's do an inventory of like what you want in a relationship, what you need. Let's talk about what a healthy relationship looks like. And then let's talk about what your relationship looks like. And I would compare with what's important. If they have children, it's even more important because I don't think we think about this a lot, but we have love legacy. Like my parents left me a love legacy. My grandparents, I saw them going through it and, and, and pushing through it and staying the course, right? And staying committed to each other. Learn, you know, they have disagreements, but they would show us like how to talk things out and then let it go or to regroup and talk about it. Um, so you I would also impress on that person, like what legacy do you want for your children? Because your children are always watching and observing. So a lot of the cycles that we see that are dysfunctional in families is because it just keeps going from generation to generation. Right. So it's a it's a love legacy that's been passed down that is not that is dysfunctional in a sense. Wow. That's dope. I actually saw um, Jordan Peterson um, 
he I'm going to paraphrase what he said, but uh, he actually said something very similar. He said that um, fighting, parents fighting an argument is borderline essential, realistically. Yeah, it is, yeah. Uh, because especially like with when you have kids mm -hmm. because they need to understand that, you know, a fight or an argument, not a fist fight, but you know, right. like a right. debate or constructive argument. Yeah. yeah. Constructive yeah. argument Healthy should not friction. exactly mm -hmm. should not be like, you have to be able to process it, handle it and deal with it and realistically problem solve that because it's almost inevitable. Yeah. You know, throughout your life, no matter if it's with your loved one or whether it's with your partner or, or coworker, you know what I'm saying? So I definitely do think that that's great. Um, I think it's super important. I, um, I've worked with people where they never saw their parents argue. And yeah. so guess what their mechanism was? They would disappear or they would just not argue. They would just go away. They didn't know how to have that conversation. And they didn't realize it until we really talked about it. Like, I never saw my parents have any healthy friction or have a disagreement. So I really didn't know how to weather that. And the way they watched their parents deal with it was you know, one of the parents would like leave or wow. avoid. So I think that's um, something that is, you know, important for people to learn that there is going to be healthy friction. You can model it in a good way for your kids so that when your kids have things they don't agree with someone on, you're actually teaching them good skills of dealing with conflict as well.